Oh, the shame, the shame of it all. You know how it goes. You find some minis that you think are really cool and you must have them, so you buy them. And then while you're waiting for them to turn up, you find some other minis that are even cooler and you really want them and you get them too. And then the first set get lobbed in the box while you paint the second set. And for some reason, the minis that end up in the box never get painted. On this episode, we take a look at my shamefully large pile of unpainted minis. Ugh. Whenever I get new miniatures, I always make an effort to clean them up and assemble them ready to go. Most of the ones I'm going to show you have a bit of build up on the bases, and I'll usually wash over them with some watered down white primer to make sure that I spot any gaps or mould lines that I want to get rid of before priming. So I've dug through my shamefully large pile of unpainted minis, I mean carefully handpicked a bespoke collection of the finest, weirdest and most interesting ones to show you. They're all wargaming or role playing minis rather than ones from games or toy conversions, but don't worry, I'm definitely not going to spend the next 20 minutes waving around a load of random Reaper bones. So Reaper then. Uh, Reaper are difficult to avoid, they are indeed the big guys in the playground. Um, Reaper miniatures based in the US have the widest selection of sculpts available really. They do both lead minis and the Reaper Bones plastic minis. This wizard mini is the only one I'm going to show you today because this is one of the special minis. Every so often Reaper does special miniatures on their website. These minis have a lot of character uh, and I picked this particular one up because he can either be a summoner or a necromancer. All of Reaper's fantasy minis are 28mm heroic scale. Heroic 28mm scale uh, makes them a bit bigger a bit more cartoonish, but it does make it easy for you to paint, it makes it easier for you to identify different features, and uh, it gives them a lot more personality, especially from three feet away. In one of his recent videos, Krauser Minis was talking about taking a look at your miniature collection in order to run encounters for D&D. It's actually a really good way of doing it. You can take a look at some of your minis and go, what could I use this guy for? What sort of encounter could I do? Would he make a good NPC? Would he make a good hireling? It's a good villain for my campaign. Great thing about Reaper is it has so many sculpts available, you can even plan encounters using Reaper's figure finder on their website. All you'd have to do is look for a wizard, scroll through the pictures, find something you like that you think you might be able to use in an encounter. Other World Miniatures in the UK are another popular manufacturer, and they've taken a lot of inspiration from AD&D and the artwork from the original modules and the monster manual. They have a really wide selection available for monsters, uh, NPCs, player characters like this sort of stoic knight, but they could easily be used for skirmish games like Frostgrave and Songs of Blades and Heroes. Got an injured wizard here, might be good for an NPC or a dungeon encounter. Perhaps you've been sent out to go and find this guy, lost in the dungeon. They've recently updated their collection and some of the miniatures aren't available anymore. I've got these two goblin wolf riders, they don't do now. But these could be really good for boss character in a goblin encounter or maybe a fast scout. This one's quite special. This is the limited edition orc miniature that they put out for the 10th UK Games Expo. And he's holding a couple of dice in his hand and he's got all of his gaming supplies on his back. Really need to get around to painting this one. They only made so many, so this is actually quite a rare one. Otherworld is very popular. They are quite easy to paint. The metal's pretty decent. They usually don't need much in the way of mold line removal, but they are quite expensive uh, compared to other brands. Spellcrow. Spellcrow from Poland. Uh, they're known most for conversion bits for 40k and Warhammer Fantasy, but they do also do their own line of fantasy miniatures for the Umbra Tourist skirmish game. Their fantasy game actually uses 32 mil scale, but you can easily get away with it, especially when you've got them on the table and you're about three feet away. If we've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know how much I love the Velcro Werewolf. It really reminds me of the Balverine from Fable, sort of sitting there on his rock. He's even got little bangles in the hair. But enough about painted minis, I was talking about unpainted ones. Get out of here. This is the Dyniac race from the uh, skirmish game, which are basically pumpkin people. I've got a two here, I've got a, got a pumpkin archer and a sort of pumpkin wizard. And you could use them in all sorts of ways in your games, either as monstrous creatures or maybe cursed villagers that have now got pumpkin heads. Maybe they've grown out of the pumpkin patch itself. Perhaps the village is cursed and the only way for the people to protect themselves is to carve themselves out a pumpkin head and wander around with it on. As well as the metal miniatures, Spellcrow also do resin minis. Got a witch here who's also wielding a pumpkin. Maybe I could tie that in, not sure. And it's incredibly light. The only weight here is in the base. Blur, it's a vampire. Midland Miniatures. Midland Miniatures are a company in the UK. 
who make very affordable metal minis. They've had a lot of success lately with uh, various Kickstarters, uh, including the one for the Halfling Apprentice Wizards, Winter Adventurers that I really liked. Looks like it's got oven mitts on. They don't have much in the way of monsters, but they do have a great selection of humanoid characters that you can use for NPCs, villains, or player characters. None of these miniatures come with bases, but they all have bags of personality. These are pretty much true scale 28mm, so they work really well with the other world minis, and you can get quite a lot of bang for your buck. And the faces are nice and big, with large eyes, which makes them quite easy to paint. Stonehaven Miniatures Stonehaven minis have a really, really cool selection of gnomes and dwarves in particular, and I really like these. They've all got bags of personality, and they fit really well with the other world and the Midland miniatures that we talked about earlier. Look how tiny he is, little gnome. Because I'm old, I'm tiny. If you ever need a badger, or three with an afro, take a look at Stonehaven miniatures. Their selection keeps expanding, and like Midland miniatures, they've had quite a lot of success with Kickstarters, so keep an eye out for them on there. These guys paint really well, some of their older sculpts are a little bit flat though. This is a Razorback Worm from Privateer Press for Hordes. And there's my happy peekaboo troll that I also got from there. A lot of their wargaming miniatures can be used as monsters as they're nice and big and chunky and they've got bags of detail. They are quite heavy though and there are some mold lines so you've got to be a little bit careful there. But they're definitely worth a look. It's always great fun dropping miniatures on your players that they don't recognise from the monster manual and they're not sure how to react. Hordes of War Machine is still going, but failed miniature games a great resource for cool monster minis, and are usually cheaper. Knowles' Marvellous Mold Lines WizKids' attempt to knock Reaper Bones off their cheap plastic minis throne resulted in this. There are quite a wide selection of official D&D minis. They've been helpfully pre-primed, so you can slap the paint straight on. The problem is they don't cut the mold lines off. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, that's fine, but some of them can be quite bad and really distracting. And as soon as you cut the mold line off or file it down, you've cut through the primer. So you've got to reprime them anyway. My poor unicorn here suffered from wonky horn syndrome. I managed to repair with a bit of boiling water. They are quite a good entry level for role players that have never got into miniature painting before because they can take something straight out of the box. Stick them to the, what I can only describe as a tiddlywink, um, that they supply as, as a base and slap a bit of paint on. The translucent minis that they do are actually pretty decent, but you've got to be very careful how you paint them so as not to muck up the effect. And there's also a Pathfinder line, so if you need official Pathfinder minis that you want to paint yourself, that's quite a good place to look. Alternative armies in Scotland are the closest thing to an official miniature manufacturer as you're going to get for Advanced Song of Blades and Heroes. Uh, they did the Kickstarter minis that went with the Dwarf Supplement by Ganesha Games. And I've got a couple of them here. They're quite big, probably closer to sort of Reaper scale 28mm. This guy's swinging around a Morning Star that's at least as big as his head. I'm not entirely sure who's swinging who. Uh, there's a guy tooting his horn here who is almost two-dimensional. And this Dwarven Barbarian Slinger that's pretty cool. You could use this for a Ranger or a Druid. Or some sort of lost dwarven tribe. Alternative armies also have a sci-fi line and you can buy painted versions of these miniatures directly from their website which is interesting. Remember what I was saying about out of print miniature games? Well I found these in what can only be described as still in their packaging if by packaging you mean what was left when it's been fossilized for a few hundred years. Both of these miniatures are from a game called Carnage that came out in somewhere around 1998. In the original base set of the game, they used cardboard stand-ins instead of actual minis. And this was sort of an upgrade pack to improve your game. This is the Orb of Power being pulled by two Flamingo Dodo Terror Bird things. And this is Benny, the giant. It turns out Carnage was a 25mm scale game. Uh, so this guy is a little bit wee for a... 28 mil scale giant but he does make a really cool ogre he's got what looks like a wrestler's belt and a normal human sized shield as a bit of a trophy around his knee so i could see this being a really cool encounter for a thieves guild or a fighting arena if you're looking for other out of date minis look no further than some of the old manufacturers like ral partha and grenadier this is an imperial minotaur that i kitted out with a frostgrave axe and shield as the original ones were missing and there's of course the ralpatha chimera with the traditional dragon goat lion head 
just a bit of green stuff around the head joints, and this guy's pretty well good to go. They did design many of these older miniatures pretty well, especially for assembly. Hot off their Burrows and Badgers anthropomorphic heroes line, Oathsworn launched the Heroes in Sensible Shoes Kickstarter for realistic and sensibly dressed female adventurers. They've got quite a good range of different character options, heroes and villains, but it's called Tiefling, Demon Adventurer, Human Cleric, with holding up a torch, a human treasure hunter or adventurer, with a lantern, with loads of stuff going on on the back there. In the last Sensible Shoes Kickstarter, they also included a few male characters. Here's a sort of evil warlock wizard waving his wand around. They've got a great amount of detail. They're basically on par with the Midland miniatures or other world ones in terms of scale. They're all one piece sculpts, so you don't have to assemble them. And they've all been made in such a way that it's actually really easy to get a paintbrush on them. There aren't really any parts of this model that you can't get at or you're going to have to struggle with. So these could be a great starting point, especially if you're new to painting. Oathsworn also do this really cool and unique owlbear. Unlike most of the beaky, slightly overweight, pudgy beach ball owlbears that most of the pre-painted plastics. This one's much more of a serious predator. Looks more like a jungle cat with a beak rather than a bear, but it also makes it look much more menacing and serious. Like some of the other manufacturers, they don't come with bases, but that's easy enough to fix. Zenit Miniatures. Uh, this is a company in Spain. They do a Japanese fantasy line called Toril and a sort of weird fantasy sci-fi kind of universe called Nemesis. These three Tanuki dudes are from the Toril line. They're sort of Earth spirits. All the Zenit miniatures are 32mm scale, but as I've said before, with creatures and monsters like this, it doesn't really matter if they're a little bit big. This particular set came with three different poses, which was great, and I can think of loads of ways of using these guys in one of my games. This is one of the miniatures from the Nemesis line. Maybe this guy could be a psionicist or an illusionist or something cool like that. Unfortunately, this one came missing his arm, uh, so I had to make one. But it works quite well. I think it'd be okay when it's painted. I'm not sure about the material they use, though. These pewter miniatures seem to have too much tin in them, I think. They're very soft, especially compared to some of the others we've just seen. This one in particular is a little bit flimsy and brittle. Maybe it was just a bad batch, I'm not sure. But perhaps be a little bit careful. I couldn't have done this video without mentioning North Star. The Frostgrave plastic soldiers, barbarians, really cool. Is that guy wearing the Skyrim helmet? Mm. Angry McBeardface with his unfeasibly large hammer. What appears to be Conan from the end of the Conan the Barbarian film. No, not that one, the, the good one. Oh, this guy. This guy is a standard Frostgrave barbarian, but when you did the Nick starter pre-order for the Frostgrave folio, it came with a metal head and arm holding his big mace so that you could make the barbarian that's shown on the cover of the book. It also came with the two sigilist miniatures that are on there too. It's always a good bet to take a look at the Nick starters they do for the various games because you usually pick up a few cool extras. The North Star website also hosts other miniature companies like Cobblestone Castings and some of the big wargaming ones. You can dig around in their bargain bin and the clearance section to look for single sprues. And this can be a really great place to find some cool minis. I bought a single sprue of these Perry Foot Knights. While I don't need a load of medieval era foot soldiers for a mass battle war game, one sprue gives me easily enough to use for town guard or representatives of the king's army. They're multi-part kits and you can assemble them in any way you want and get all sorts of different poses. I've actually combined these with some loose bits from some of my Frostgrave sprues to make them all a bit more unique and interesting. Because they're plastic minis, they're also really easy to cut out and alter in different ways. I've chipped this guy's shield up to make it look sort of battle-worn, and I've altered this guy's arm so he's got the shield right up against him. Buying multi-part sprues also gives you lots of bits left over that you can use for different projects. Gather round, children, while I tell you a story. These are miniatures from the World of Twilight. No, not that kind of Twilight. World of Twilight is a fantasy skirmish game that, rather than the standard humanoid tropes, uses dinosaurs and anthropomorphic lizard people. It's one of the quirkier and more unique fantasy skirmish games. I picked up these guys to use in my D&D game as lizard folk or turtle wizards or old sages. This little guy's about to force choke someone. 
This one's holding a very large staff made from an old bone. This is the clearly the breakout alchemist tech priest of the group. His spanner slash staff and his little flight cap. And this guy with his lantern slash fishing rod, who could probably double for a turtle with very little effort. When I received these miniatures, the lantern arm was actually missing. I've had no end of minis that have been missing arms, or bits of leg. I've even got a Reaper Bones frog beast that came with two left feet, which I wasn't too happy about. But what was great was that the guy at Twilight Miniatures not only noticed that it was missing before putting it in the box, he left a little note in there saying, the lantern arm's currently missing, I don't have a spare one, I'll cast you another one and send it over. And this little guy turned up within two days. That's the best customer service I've ever had from a miniature company. It's great to see a small company put so much effort in to give such good customer service and to ensure that I have the best experience and the most fun putting together their model. Hero Forge! Thought I'd get some 3D printed minis in here too. Um, Hero Forge have been doing it for a while. It's really easy to use, especially if you have no knowledge or interest in 3D modelling. All of their stuff's now printed by Shapeways and their plastics are only getting better. This is Smokey the Tabaxi Monk from our ill-fated 5e game. I'm still 25 XP from level 6, guys, by the way. The campaign's been parked for quite a while now. Never mind. I noticed that with the Catfolk Mini, when you put it into the full backwards, it kind of makes it look like he's escaped from the Matrix set. And then I put the arrows in to make it look like he's just finished doing deflect missiles. And they're all 3D printed. They are pretty expensive, but you do get a unique sculpt that you put together yourself and they paint up just as easily as normal plastic miniatures. Let's finish up with a bit of converting. These are the survivors of the last battered Arcane Legions booster pack from the back of my local game store. They're sort of wispy spirit demon thingies, and they all came with the same sculpt, but to make it a bit more interesting, I took the fourth miniature, which was actually pretty badly damaged, took off both of its arms and its head, and redistributed them to the rest of the team. This is the original sculpt, with the sort of magic effect on one hand and the sword in the other. This is my botched together double magic hand spirit. And this one is dual wielding swords. So if you find that you've got a lot of minis that have the same sculpt, you can have lots of fun just mixing and matching a couple of the pieces back together. And suddenly you've got a lot of unique minis. Right, that's your lot. The finest selection from my pile of hobby shame. There are so many companies making fantasy miniatures and that was just a handful of them. A lot of these are based in the UK. There are plenty of other companies all over the world that make really cool stuff. Hopefully this was interesting and maybe gives you a few new places to look in your endless hunt for minis. I'll come back at some point and show you some of my painted mini collection. It's full of some of your favorites like GW, Mantic, Warlord, Gripping Beast, repaints of pre-painted plastics like Heroclix, D&D, Pathfinder, EM4's pre-painted metal models, uh, heresy stuff, those German ones whose name I always forget, a bit of resin madness, conversions, requisition toys, all sorts really. And who knows, maybe some of these minis that you've just seen might get on the paint table, eventually. When I get round to it, probably? Do you have a hobby shame pile? Do you have terrain you've never finished? Or even games you've not been able to play yet? Let me know downstairs. Thanks for watching. Take a rummage in the description box for more content on this topic and subscribe for more plus one wisdom. See you next time.